Greetings everyone, welcome to another episode of The Unboxing. This is your host, Simon Belmont, I am the co-host, and yeah, because this thing's clearly taking center stage over my goofy butt, but my first four-figure statue for Simon Belmont of Castlevania fame has just arrived, and this is an excellent commemoration of the character. Sure, he didn't make it into Smash Brothers, but... This is a great way to idolize the Vampire Slayer. So, yes, I'm a huge Castlevania nut. I love the old games, I played them all the time. Normally, for the unboxing, I ramble on and on for about seven straight minutes about whatever it is that I'm reviewing in relation to the product that I'm opening. That's not gonna happen this time, because I, I don't wanna screw this up. So, yes, Castlevania, one of the greatest side-scrolling platformers of the 8-bit and 16-bit era, and uh, uh, go play Bloodstained. When Bloodstained comes out, it's going to be awesome. Uh, so, let me get this thing open here, and let's find out what we're working with here. Oh, uh, no. Hey. hey, director, can you put some things down at the bottom of the screen, like maybe Castlevania gameplay footage or something, so that people don't have to watch me clumsily fight a box? Thank you. Uh... It's... Oh! Uh... uh cause something with, like, first... For... With this being my first... My first... First four figures purchase... Um... A part of me is a little afraid to... Even consider... Taking it out of the box... Yeah, clearly I'm gonna have to move this thing because it's all kind of... It's all kind of taking up space here. Um... But... Maybe I should get Scotch to sponsor me with scissors or something. Because... <laughs> oh, this, 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 is, this is already great. This is gold here. Cut. I need something to cut! I can't believe it. I don't own anything that is capable of cutting. So I'm going to have to improvise. Uh, a screwdriver and a an Allen wrench. Sure, why not? So, what are you going to do with your multi-hundred dollar statue? I don't know, I'm just going to use random tools to get it open. <laughs> He's probably stuck in here with Han Solo. There is some more tape around the side that's holding the phone together. Uh -huh. Oh no! I, I don't even know why I put these things here. It's Castlevania, get it? And here is... The cross. It's the hand with the cross in it. Yeah, alright. Um, okay. So, given what's happening uh, here with, with a good deal of this, I'm gonna separate this into two parts here. So, uh, I'll be back in a moment. Here's a little bit of free advice, and you probably don't even need me to tell you this. You want to make good videos? Get better lighting. Because I don't have it. Yet. Yeah. Other parts. This looks like the back of his headband. There's going to be a great deal more construction than I thought with this. Okay, a lot of weight is in the base. Um... <laughs> ah. Nauseous fumes. And I have statue number 48. So that makes me feel a little bit special. Uh, more foam. That gets cast off the side. And now all I have left is to get Simon himself out of here. He's pretty weighty. Whoa. Oh my 
Okay, here we go. And a couple of more pieces. These look like more uh, bands of tied of thread. And that's going to go into the construction. Alright. I... I have... I have cleared the table! Uh, and... Just the body... Oh. Ah, that looks so boss. Iron rivets here. Go on here for now, just... <laughs> yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, this is so cool. Uh, pardon me if I if I were typed in speechless here, but... I don't, I don't know what to say. Okay, uh, I guess I'll just do some preliminary piecing together. Okay. And one hit down here to stick on to the back. Find out what direction that goes. Easy peasy. And there's alternate hands here. One that has the Morning Star. I'll put the Morning Star on for now. And when I do the review portion, I'm going to adjust it with other parts. Uh, this is a short knife or dagger. Don't have a clue where that one sticks out of. Here? Hail! No, I didn't. Okay. Maybe there's something I should consult. Um. Look, I. Okay, I did not lose any other parts here. And, yeah, there's some alternate hands here. I'm going to find out what these are capable of wielding. sword, a uh, short sword, so I'm going to assume that this one goes on to the other peg that jumps out of here, I think, no, that's got a fit in there, I think, and on the wrong side, okay, yeah, wrong side, Sword on this side, a uh, short throwing knife over here. I think I'm so terrified of trying to jut this thing around. Oh, cool! It, <laughs> it goes easy. So, this is the preliminary completion of Simon Belmont first four figure statue. Uh, I'm going to do the review portion of it next, so stick around. I don't consider myself as skilled a toy reviewer as my wife Takaizen or my sister Tokiki. By the way, go to somewhere in the midst of nowhere to read their reviews. This is not a plug. And if you're watching this from the site, then thanks for stopping. Visit somewhere in the midst of nowhere at wordpress.com. I'm gonna try my absolute best to give this toy as much justice as possible. Just simply browsing through the first four figures' galleries will show that they have a very good eye for getting the sculpt and the likeness of the characters down to a perfect T. The brazenness and the valor that you get from playing the video games is completely on display here. Unlike someone else's take on Simon Belmont, seriously, Obata, what was that? The amount of detail put into encapsulating the image of every accessory and item on his outfit is just... incredible. There's no other way to put it. 
His lips pursed into a partial sneer and the upturned portion of his mouth indicates a pull in muscles and also natural folding of human skin. The stubbled beard indicates many days traveled, not time to stop and rest. The eyebrows, lowered and contorted, perform a symphony of anger and frustration across his face. And also, on his eyes, there's small lower eyelashes. It's times like this where I wish I had a good camera. Most figures that I've had experience with, you kind of get really decent eyes, but for the most part they're generally lifeless. Simon Belmont's eyes reflect back with a little bit of life, like there's someone there. Kind of spooky. Further indication of the tension carried in his face can be displayed with his neck as the cords are protruding as his head is turned slightly to the side. And I can't verify if it was done on purpose, but I think that the gloss used on the surface of his skin indicates perspiration. And I think that's pretty neat. A little gross, but neat. And my camera isn't detailed enough to pick it up, but there's a really neat cross-thatching thread for the fabric lining the tunic. The leather headband compresses the hair naturally, and also the studded beads have a slightly more gloss than its leather fabric around it. Uh, I can't really tell, but I think that there's a little bit of an orange tint on the hair. It looks a little bit messy, but when the light hits it, it actually reflects it decently, so maybe that was done on purpose. I think it's safe to assume that Simon Belmont's tunic is made out of a combination of protective wire mesh and animal hide, and you can see stressed and tanned lines where the fabric was tailored. The top buckle and strap looks a little bit mashed on at the end there. It's probably my only knock against that. His muscles are tensed and braced and he looks ready for battle. I've had somebody comment on the picture and say that he looks a bit like a she-male. It could be worse. The macabre nature of battle is captured in this likeness, so I think that simply making a pretty boy or a more reserved Simon Belmont would dissuade from it and reduce the quality to a severe degree. Sometimes the physical beauty, or at least the stereotypes of it, isn't what's best. Simon also came with some additional hand options. I'm personally not too keen on it, but a little more on that in a second. As you saw during the unboxing portion, I had a little bit of a fight trying to get the sword and the dagger to stick in place. They were a little bit fussy, but not really all too bad. I had the same mix-up when it came to dealing with the leather ties that go on in his boots. I got a little bit mixed up as to which one was supposed to go where, and because I'm such a clumsy elf, I felt nervous about just breaking the whole thing entirely. Now this second one's a little tucked away under here, Kinda of hard to get a bead on- there we go. The whip is made up of kind of that composite coiled metal that bends or allows you to twist it around. I kind of question the long-term elasticity of it, but if you can get it to pose just right, it actually does look pretty cool. I just kind of wonder how long it'll last, but it does leave a great deal of creativity. Going back and talking about the contrasting styles between the chest protector and the leather portions of his armor that allow for more flexibility, the coloring on them is perfect. I looked the statue up and down for quite a while and couldn't find any sort of blemish or smudge. Everything looks like either tanned or tempered metal or animal hide. A couple of niches can be seen done with the sculpting tools used on the hair, and the strands themselves don't look particularly too bad. I tried to get the best shot possible to see if anyone could pick up on that orange tint that I was talking about earlier. With this being my first grand figure purchase ever, certainly expectations were high, and this... This certainly exceeded everything that I could have anticipated. First four figures are absolutely incredible in their craft, and they pay very close attention to detail in capturing the likenesses of any statue that I've ever seen them do. If you're fortunate enough to own one of their pieces, then you have a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about. This was certainly worth every penny, and I don't regret it.